at you and I see million stars I am so glad you came and stole my heart Oh, for the better off for good Oh, for the better off for you Ooh. You light up the sky like a billion lights When I'm by your side, I'm in paradise You're the breath in my bones, you're the fire in my soul Oh, what a beautiful life With you, what a beautiful La, 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 la. the Gypsy King. It's a tough gig being Kitty's father. <laughs> where, where, is, where is Kitty? Put your hand up. There you go. It's a tough gig being your father. In another era, January 2020, many of you came to Kitty's 18th ugly shoes party. <laughs> After she gave us the impossible instruction to have 90 people for dinner, without making it look as though it spent any money, because that would be embarrassing. I don't know why she was so concerned. She got so drunk in her 12-inch platform shoes that she crashed out at 11 p.m. and missed most of the party. Anyway, she's now 21, sober-ish, has Hugh here all the way from Queensland to keep on her best behavior. I'm not really sure if it's the best man for that job. Uh, and seems to have overcome this embarrassment with her fat, her big fat gypsy extravaganza. Woo! Now around the time, this is, this is a, bit, a bit technical, a bit boring, but anyway. Around the time of her 18th, she told us she had a genius idea, which was refused to do her mocks in order to revise for her A-levels. Now that would have been a genius move if COVID hadn't kicked off four days later. A-levels were cancelled and she ended up with the results so low, Guinness Book of Records low. I didn't even realize there were that many letters in the alphabet. So while all of you were luxuriating on the beach, 
and tasting grain inflation with your assessed four A stars. <laughs> Kitty was sweating it out through her A levels for real in October. Aww. She and about 10 other people in the whole country. <laughs> That she turned it around and got into Durham is a sort of a miracle, but also sort of inevitable. If she sets her mind on something, it's going to happen. There might be some chaos involved, and we all get roped in whether we think it's a good idea or not. And you'll sympathize with my plight from some of the things she's put us through in the last three years. Having to cycle the last three days of her London to John O'Groats cycle ride with her in two days because. <laughs> no, what, what, what did I say? London. London. Land's End. Land's End to John O'Groats with her because no one would be impressed if she didn't cut a day off her target. <laughs> It hadn't helped for the first six days her partner had dropped out and her gears had got stuck. But she kept going in sixth gear, alone, not knowing how to use a sat-nav, not even knowing how to change a puncture. <laughs> and then, having to set up our own London Marathon course here because the actual London Marathon had been cancelled for COVID, but she was still going to do it. She did, of course, and then she cut another half an hour off when she did it for real. And then... And then getting getting our horse trailer stuck in it stuck is this real? Getting our horse trailer stuck in a KFC drive-through, <laughs> trying to deliver her running machine to her in Yorkshire because she needed to keep up 15k a day, even though it was midwinter. And then having to drive to a cement works in the Peak District at 4 a.m. in the morning, the day after having just arrived in Cornwall, because she announced she might be able to qualify for the England fell running team, <laughs> despite never having run up a fell. <laughs> Amazingly, she did. And then having to arrange an emergency replacement of everything, everything in Spain, after she fell asleep in a park and had everything stolen. <laughs> she even managed to get the replacement phone I got to her after two weeks negotiation with Spanish customs, stolen 30 minutes after picking it up. <laughs> And then, having to persuade her not to take a job in a, job in a turkey plucking factory. <laughs> she said she couldn't afford to have a gap on her CV. <laughs> and then having to buy a set of dating cards, aged 54, after being married for 30 years of marriage, just to make sure her website worked. <laughs> In fact, I might need to buy a burner set. Dottie keeps counting them to check I haven't been handing any out. And then finding out she was detained by security at Darwin Airport after setting off the scanners who recorded her as 100% liquid. She was sweating like a maniac after doing an impromptu 10K around the airport car park in 35 degrees while waiting for her transfer because she needed to keep her training going. <laughs> and then having to reassure Dottie when Kitty was swimming with Hugh in a Queensland bay that was a bit sharky. <laughs> Jaws didn't show up. And then having to persuade Dottie to call, not to call the lifeguards helicopter when Kitty and Hugh set out into the Atlantic in a six foot inflatable dinghy in Cornwall. They made it back. <laughs> and then meeting her in the Lake District at short notice for an upwards only mountain race and being told she wanted a photo on the finishing line. That's fine, but the problem with upwards only races is that the finishing line is at the top of a, the sixth highest mountain in England. <laughs> and then, and finally, telling her not to worry if she was stopped by the police who were tailing us before her driving test. Actually, that one was my fault. Um, <laughs> Kitty is one of life's enthusiasts. She's determined and original. She doesn't like setbacks, but they're not all for the bad. It wasn't in her pre-COVID game plan to end up as a gappy at a Yorkshire prep school. Well, it was either that or Costa Rica. <laughs> Boris made it worse by announcing that all schools would close two hours after I dropped her off. <laughs> but there you go. She might have been more likely to have met Hugh on a beach. But there he was in a cold Yorkshire January. So as the Gypsy King for one day, I ask you all to raise a glass to my princess, Little Treacle, <laughs> Kitty Conker. It's 2026. Kitty Shepherd Cross is on Dragon's Den. She takes her time, takes a deep breath, 
and says, I'm going to offer you 500 quid for 100% cut. <laughs> Offline dating has just IPO'd at 10 billion. <laughs> the share price went through the roof after she managed to do the impossible. Get George Minge laid. <laughs> Sorry, George. Um, I don't know you. I just, if anyone is not a Durham, the man will say, get Rex done laid. Um, children are dying every day in Beijing on the factory line, coming up with three words to sum up Durham Freshers. <laughs> you might ask, what if a Durham Fresher is too complex to sum up in three words? It's not a problem. <laughs> If anything, three words are sometimes too many. <laughs> Back to Dragon's Den. The camera pans round to the contestant. The kitty's just handed out 500 quid. It's a French woman with a stack of pajamas. <laughs> Dorte Chef across his dreams to take Dottie's pajamas have come true. Ah, beauty. <laughs> Two days later, and we're in the Supreme Court. A case lawsuit has assembled against Kitty to try and block the acquisition due to her previous antics. The, pr the prosecution have reviewed Kitty's checkered past, and fuck me if they got a case on their hands. First to the dispatch box. The Association of Downhouse Mothers. <laughs> this girl is absolutely ghastly. <laughs> One of them decries. At 14 years old, just about too young to go to prison, <laughs> Kitty defrauded a bunch of her friends' mothers by creating a fake email account, pretending to be our mother, asking to take their daughters out bowling at Exia. <laughs> All the while organising a secret and illegal party, which 150 of London's coolest 14 year olds turned up to. No offence if you didn't get the invite. I'm there in the witness box with this group of mothers, because she held the party at my house. And because Tilly Tetherington Slackville's mum is fit. Um, <laughs> Next to the witness box, Shamima Begum. <laughs> That's right, if anyone doesn't know, Kitty's recently set up a meme page for Shamima Begum. <laughs> they got 400,000 likes on TikTok. <laughs> with videos of very sombre interviews of Shamima Begum with captions saying things like, when you got to turn at the club. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be patronising, does everyone know who that is? Um, she's a girl who recently threw her life in England away for her relationship with a foreign criminal. What's he called? Um, Hugh Waitman. Um, <laughs> um, we know what you did in Edinburgh, mate. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Shamima, Shamima's in the witness box because she thinks her reputation's been tarnished by her, her associations with Kitty. <laughs> Third to the witness box, Harry Shepherd Cross. Some of you might already know that she got her father to write her EPQ at school. <laughs> and it slightly backfired for her when, her when he handed in a history essay copied straight off Wikipedia and she got an E. <laughs> What he didn't know is it actually went a lot further than that. <laughs> Harry had to sit her Lent term in Lower Sick to Down House <laughs> and get his place wearing a dress and a wig <laughs> and got dropped by all her friends for talking too much about the Battle of Agincourt. <laughs> then friends zone Patrick de Gaulle ceiling. <laughs> For the Eastern Socials. <laughs> Next to the witness box, the mayor of Polzeth. <laughs> First came the locusts, then came the plague, then came the boils. But all that pales in comparison to when Kitty Shepherd Cross started summering in Polzeth. <laughs> the streets were overflowing with Radley boys and mullets. <laughs> Next to the witness box, a group of disgruntled men from Ellsbury <laughs> protesting about how many of them have been catfished by Kitty's Tinder profile. <laughs> for precious during lockdown. I think I had a picture of Alice Tanner. <laughs> I don't know if when you came up here you noticed the uh, sign saying no HGVs. <laughs> but that was actually put up because Kitty couldn't stop matching with lorry drivers on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Next. 
Next in the witness box is Jessica, our old, our old nanny, <laughs> who Kitty fired over the phone on my mother's WhatsApp. <laughs> She starts talking about how she caught Jack bashing one out in the pool house. The judge says that's not relevant! <laughs> don't embarrass Jack in front of all these people. I won't, don't worry. <laughs> Daisy takes the stage to defend Kitty. Kitty actually had it quite good in comparison to Daisy. When Daisy came back from the hospital after being born, and Jack and me accidentally tipped her out the pram. <laughs> For ages we didn't know if she'd been concussed or not, whether, whether there's any long-term damage. It was only 20 years later when she brought, <laughs> brought home her idiot boyfriend, Tom White, <laughs> that we realised there must have been some serious damage. <laughs> so Tom White was meant to be here. Oh, it's, it was all cool between me and him. <laughs> Daisy stops. Kitty is literally my best friend in the world, and she never do anything to hurt me. She's only tried to get away with White, only tried to get with Whitey twice this month. She's my number one. The judge looks at Whitey, looks at the evidence, deemed her immediately insane. <laughs> Kitty takes the stand to defend herself. There have there have been difficult times in her life. It's not all been easy. Honestly, I'm being serious now. If we could all take a second, it hasn't all been easy for Kitty. She once had to choose between spending an eight night in Pole Zep and going to the under 18's National Running Championship. It was like Chariots of Fire, except instead of the Bible, it was the Chin Dictionary. And the first scene of them running on the beach, instead of the first scene running on the beach, is Kitty telling the whole of Radley to come back to her place. While George Perkins tries to beat up her brother. <laughs> I'm watching you, mate. Um, things ain't been easy. One time she broke out of Down House by night to run back to Buckingham Palace because she felt homesick. <laughs> um, Harry Shepherdcross interrupts the speech to say, I wrote that all for you as well, you cheeky shit. <laughs> No, I didn't, she says, but incriminates herself when she starts talking about the Battle of Agincourt again. <laughs> the, judge, the judge bangs the gavel. Kitty, you have been sentenced to one summer without going to Pole's Earth. <laughs> the UN interrupts, that's too cruel. <laughs> Kitty, what can I say? I'm not here to just speak for myself. So I'd like to say, on behalf of my sister Daisy, we love you. <laughs> on behalf of my mother, Daisy, we love you. And on behalf of my brother, Jack, do not invest in crypto! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For, for your delectation, you have now got two lovely girls who are not wearing string vests. I know you're too tired to speak to earlier. And they know a lot more dirt on Kitty than Huey or I do, and a lot more dirt than Huey or I ever want to know. <laughs> I hand you over. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's lovely to see so many of you here to celebrate 21 years of Kitty Shepherd Cross, dressed in your most elegant and fetching outfits, as ever. OK, um, so firstly, we want to say a massive, massive thank you to Harry and Dorte for being the most amazing hosts and having a, and throwing the most incredible party. And another special mention, I think, should go to the ambulance crew, St John's, <laughs> who I don't think have ever missed a single step across birthday bash. Oh, okay, me again. Uh, so many people have no clue how, why, or when they actually first met Kitty, but I've known her throughout my most formative years at school, and more importantly, as um, he was mentioning, on Paul's F Beach. So, <laughs> Luckily for us tonight, given that Kitty's brother is now a stand-up comedian, and we were given the shortest notice of, for the call-up, there's certainly no shortage of hilarious Kitty stories to tell. But we'll, we'll be nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> the call-up to give the speech, as Gina said, was rather last minute. So rather than your kind of conventional drabble, we've sort of put together some unique reasons that Kitty is special. 
Um, firstly, the fact that she refuses to buy deodorant, so she showers about ten times a day. And as the designated running partner to the next Paula Radcliffe herself, I am lucky enough to deal with this sensational smell every day. Um, secondly, I think Kitty has too many friends. She knows far too many people. So I was told. Oh gosh, this was this has suffered from wine. But um, this speech. But I, so I was told that it takes her an hour to get from the elm tree, which is the pub in Durham, to the Bishop's Mill. And this should not take anybody more than 10 minutes. <laughs> um, next up, we have her driving. As a regular passenger in Kitty's pristine polo, highlights for me have included not only seeing my life flash before my eyes when darting across four lanes simply to avoid paying to go through the time tunnel, <laughs> but a particular favourite was when to avoid running over a man's foot, she decided it would be a good idea to crash into his car when trying to park <laughs> instead. <laughs> okay, so another thing. Kitty's style has not changed in 10 years. <laughs> Despite her many trips to Durham's monsoon and new look in anticipation of Q's arrival from Australia. So Kitty wearing a white vest tucked into jeans with your running trainers on is not yet the go-to Durham look, but I'm sure in no time it will be. Um, her dancing, not quite as bad as her driving, but Comments along the lines of, oh my gosh, Kitty was so drunk last night, her dancing was awful, can be awkward after a night out, when in fact she was stone cold sober, she's just shit at dancing. <laughs> okay, so Kitty has to get Invisalign at least every couple of years. <laughs> and the reason is, Kitty has the world's biggest tongue, and it's too big for her own mouth. <laughs> Um, and last but not least, her extensive ambitions to take a piss in every corner of Durham. <laughs> Be that in the door of Subway or the Babylon CCTV booth. <laughs> <laughs> um, we could go on and on, quite literally, but half of the content did get censored, so sorry everyone. Um, however, on a more serious note, Kitty is one of the most gorgeous, confident, kind and funny people we know and we are so happy to celebrate her birthday this evening, even if it was in February. Um, it is actually for all her craziness and questionable decisions that we love her so much. So, Kit, you've always been my biggest hype man and I think everyone will agree, but a short conversation with Kitty and you could be convinced that you are the perfect mix of supermodel, high-performance athlete, and genius. Um, so I'm not sure that we've ever even properly hugged, but you've never failed to be the most incredible friend, and there's really no one else I'd rather have as my dance partner. And I think you even make my look, look, moves look cool, so there's, there's a win. Um, Kitty, you light up whatever room you enter, and there's simply never a dumb moment with you. Of course, it is only you that would plan a 21st with the theme of my big fat gypsy wedding. Um, so I hope we can make the rest of the evening as big and as loud as the dress you're wearing. Um, yeah, we love you. Stay crazy and have the best evening. <laughs> Hot 
they strong But you can see a face of pain When he sings you a song He sings that I don't know What tomorrow knows But I know my best days are long, long again from Jack, we'll give him a round of applause, it's fantastic, and this is when the party begins.